the current demand will go up. Makes sense, doesn't it? Because, so say like we have oil, a very, or gas. There's high demand for gas. So say that we expect the prices to go up in the future. So since the price is lower now, in the present, then the current demand, the current demand goes up. Because we know or we expect the price to rise in the future. And that's all there is, or that's a brief introduction to what expected future prices are or how, and how they affect the demand curve. The second thing is income. I'm not going to do these in a particular order, so income. So income. Income. When income rises, consumers buy more. They buy more of most goods. Consumers consumer buy more of most goods. The demand curve will shift right in this case. That's a, a logical reasoning. And there are two things I want to talk about with respect to goods. There are such things as normal goods, and there are such things as inferior goods. And these two things change differently when there are more when consumer gets more income. So when our income rises, then the demand for these normal good normal goods demand increases. But when our income drops income drops, then the demand for inferior goods rises. <laughs> Kinda makes sense, doesn't it? So say for example that we got a raise. Let's say we got like a hundred thousand dollar raise. Before a hundred thousand dollar raise, we were eating, uh, we were eating uh, lima beans because we didn't have any money to buy steak. The lima beans would be an example of an inferior good because they're not what people like. I don't like lima beans, so then, so then I consider them inferior good. So, but I, I don't have the money to buy steak. So then, with my current income, the low income, I would buy more lima beans. So when I have a low income, low income, I have a higher demand for inferior good. Demand for inferior goods. But when after my hundred thousand dollar raise, after my raise, I can buy steak. So then I can buy the good stuff. So then my demand for the steak rise. Demand for normal goods, which is the steak, rises. But when this happens, it is normal to think that our demand for inferior good decreases. It makes sense. We could buy normal goods now. So then why would we buy inferior goods? So then our demand for inferior goods would decrease. So after the raise, the demand for my lima beans, my inferior good, for inferior good, decreases and that's how income affects the demand curve now the next thing is future income and credit simple concept of how it changes the demand curve so the expected future income 
expected future income and credit so when our income is expected to rise income expected to rise to, to rise or our credit credit is easily obtainable is easily obtainable the demand will go up so the demand curve shifts right so an example of that would be it is easy to get credit before the 2008 financial crisis in the US so then the demand for houses normally would go up and that's why more were made for the next thing I'm going to talk about that uh, affects this, the demand curve is population simple thing the larger the population the greater demand for all goods so I'm just gonna write the definition here so bigger bigger the population more demand and prices so this is not supposed to be prices but this is supposed to be preferences So when people with the same people with the same income have different preferences, so then of course normally they will have different uh, different kinds of demands. Different preferences, different demands. And that's pretty much it. Preferences, not really that big of a factor. Well, to me. And in the next video, I'm going to wrap up everything that we learned about demand with a couple of examples and how. And these examples will solidify your understanding of the demand curve, how it changes, and the differences between the shifting of the demand curve and the movement of quantity demanded. Uh, thanks for watching.